Hey everyone, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here. It's been a while. I'm here at the U.S. Chess Championship and U.S. Women's Championship. This is actually where I do the live commentary with Eric Hansen. There's a huge board over here, and there's like some stuff back here, stuff everywhere. I'm in an empty room because it's uh, about two and a half hours until the commentary starts uh, around six. This is actually the day after the rest day. Uh, all the players have played five rounds, and then we had a rest day. Uh, and then today's round six. Uh, in the women's championship, we have a three-way tie for first between Nazi Pakidzi, Anna Zatonsky, and Irina Krush. They all have three and a half out of five. Um, and also, I believe they all have three wins, one loss, and one draw. Uh, and then tied for fourth, fifth are Sabina Foyzor and Tatev Abrahamian, who have three out of five. Tatev has two wins, two draws, and a loss. And Sabina has all decisive games. She's the only player in either group to have all decisive games. She has three wins and two losses. Uh, in the championship, Wesley Sozin clear first with three and a half out of five. He has two wins and three draws. There's a huge tie for second. I think there's five players that have three out of five. Let's see if I can remember them. Hikaru Nakamura, Vara Kobian, Daniel Naroditsky, Ray Robson. I think there's one more. Ooh. Yes, I can't remember them all. Uh, I'm pretty sure there were five. Second, six. Seven. Yeah. And then I know Caruana and uh, somebody else have two and a half. Oh, Caruana and Onishuk have two and a half out of five. Caruana has five draws. Um, he's been better in like, or much better in three of the games. Very good winning chances, but hasn't won yet. Hasn't lost either. Um, I wonder who I missed who's tied for second. I missed somebody. Truth hurts. Oh, Zero Book. Yeah, Yaroslav Zero Book. Um, Zero Book's also undefeated. Uh, like Hikaru, they both have one win and four draws. Uh, I think that's right. Okay, so uh, I'm going to quickly show uh, something I wanted to show from the game Carissa Yip versus Emily Wynn. Emily Wynn, this is her first time playing in the Women's Championship. I think she's 14 years old. I'm within a year. Carissa is 13. She turns 14 this year. Um, and they had uh, a very sharp Sicilian, which they both misevaluated and miscalculated. Um, this was from round four. Uh, round five actually saw six decisive games in the women's championship, no draws. So we have a lot of decisive games in the women's. Queen F3 is a little unusual, but it's okay. Um, knight D E2. Okay. Now in this position, for some reason, which I don't understand fully, we'll get to the position. Yeah. So after f3, rook c8, uh, for some reason, both players were under the illusion that black was killing it. Black has a great position. And when I was doing live commentary with Eric Hansen, Eric thought white was doing great. Like, he liked king b1, bishop c1, defending the queen side, knight d e2, defending the knight on c3. It's real safe. And then he thought white would just play h5, g6, and black has nothing near her king. So black, white has a lot of pieces near her king, a bishop on c1, knight on c3, knight on e2, rook on d1, but black has nothing near her king. So Eric thought white had a nice position, the engine agrees. Um, but both players thought black had a big attack and that white was too slow. So actually we thought white was being too aggressive, but it turned out she was just um, desperate. So she played g6 right away. And after takes, she should just play h5, and it's still unclear, but she played bishop h3, threatening the e6 pawn. Knight f8, defending g6 and e6. Now knight e4, probably losing because the knight isn't defending the c3 knight anymore. So uh, here, black should just take on c3, uh, bishop takes c3, and if white takes back, black has several ways to defend the e6 pawn. Rook e8, queen e7, queen e7, queen f7. Uh, black's a pawn up with a better position. So I think white was going to play something crazy here, like take on e6. But okay, it's just not good for white. Okay, instead, Emily played another way. Uh, knight takes b2, which isn't as good, but very interesting. Good for the crowd. Bishop b2, bishop c3, knight e6. Queen c4, because the queen's attacked. And now, I don't know if white's losing, or if knight takes e6 was a blunder. I'm not sure. Um, okay, but here white made losing move. Um, played knight takes f8. This is funny, because uh, I thought the winning idea was very difficult. 
So whenever we had grandmasters come into the commentary room, I would say, you know, black to play and win. And uh, Ray Robson solved it in about two seconds because he's Ray Robson. Uh, other grandmasters that were in here, we had uh, El Shamor Diabati, who's the resident grandmaster right now. Uh, and there was another one. Who was the other grandmaster? And he was playing in the tournament also. I forgot who it was, but they just sat there forever. Oh, it was Varakobian. Yeah, they just sat there forever not solving it. So it's black to play and win. You can pause your video if you'd like. Um, unless you're Ray Robson, then you already know the answer. Okay, so the point is, if you play queen b4, the only defense is bishop check, and then bishop goes back to b3. If white couldn't do that, then black would be winning. And probably some of you play queen b4 and didn't see the bishop could go to b3. Okay. But the winning move is bishop to d5, and that threatens mate, obviously. Queen a2, queen b2, mate. Um, and the idea is if you take it with the rook or the pawn, now you can't play bishop check, bishop e3, because there's a white piece there. So, of course, Ray Robson, without thinking, gave the best line. He said, well, okay, white can still take and then play rook takes b5, stopping mate with an x-ray. Um, I guess he puts the array in x-ray. This is funny. After bishop e6, there's two legal moves. After king h8, black's winning. After king takes knight, the computer says white's better. I guess he has queen f4 check and he's attacking. So, okay, and bishop b3. And now black has more than one way to win because black's ahead material. Although white could, you know, if white plays h5. Okay, but the quickest win is rook takes a2, the most beautiful win. Uh, obviously, if bishop a2, then mate. And if you don't do anything, rook takes b2 is winning. So you have to take with a king. Oops, sorry. And then, um, actually, it might be even better to take on c No, taking on c3 is worse. Yeah, okay, take with the king. Then bishop takes b2, threatening mate. Queen a3, queen a1 mate. So king takes is forced. Uh, queen c3 check, and rook a8, threatening rook a1 mate, queen a1 mate. So you have to go here. And now you check. If king c1, you take, threatening rook a1 mate. And rook a1 also wins the rook on h1 in case it's not mate. And queen b2 would lead to mate. And queen c3 leads to mate. Okay. So bishop b3 is better. Queen a3 threatening queen a1 mate. And this is the computer line. There's no mate, but white's totally lost because he's down the exchange. His king's open. His knight's hanging, etc., etc. Okay. So that's the, that's the correct way of playing for both sides if black had played bishop to d5. Neither player saw bishop to d5. That would have been a cool move. Uh, instead, black played uh, rook takes f8, queen takes d6, and now it's unclear. Uh, white's threatening bishop e6 check winning the queen, and black chose a very bad way of stopping it by playing the move rook e8. And the reason that's bad is Carissa found the winning move here. Well, you can pause your video, white to play and win, try to find the winning move. And that's bishop to d7 because we're attacking the rook. The rook can't move sideways because bishop e6 check again, and the rook like, has nowhere to go. So, yeah, bishop d7 is winning. Um, and white just won material, and, yeah, the game wasn't very interesting. It went on a long time, but white was up a lot of material, and eventually white was up a queen and took some pawns, and everything was great. Yeah. And I'll just show you. Okay. And here, black resign because f5 is annoying. So that was a very topsy-turvy game from round four. Carissa Yip versus Emily win. It could have gone either way. And um, Chris ended up winning. The younger player, in this case, both players are under 16 or under 15. Um, but yeah, that's a very sharp Sicilian with lots of complicated variations. Very exciting for us here and for you at home. Okay, this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make more videos, but if you guys continue to donate, which you haven't been doing lately, then maybe I'll make more. We'll see how you guys do. Um, go to my website to donate, atlchessclub.com slash donate. Uh, go to my son's YouTube page. I put links in almost all my videos. And if you uh, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, then you've seen Spencer's, you posted about Spencer's videos. I think he has about maybe 20 videos posted in the last three weeks. So he's, he's doing one a day or more. Um, he's doing different stuff, too. And, um, well, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And, um, well, U.S. Championship is very interesting. The next round starts in a couple hours. I'll see you guys later. Bye.